Amber desperately needs justice. I'm not gonna give up on her. Never. Have you ever thought about how quickly life can change? In just a matter of minutes, Amber Hagerman's life was turned upside down in a way that would send shivers down your spine. Her story is not only a haunting reminder of the dangers that lurk in our communities, but also a testament to the power of a single event to inspire change on a nationwide scale. In this video, we'll be delving deep into the terrifying details of what happened to Amber and exploring the ripple effects that her experience had on our society. Get ready to be captivated and horrified by this bone-chilling tale. So buckle up and let's dive in. It all started on a sunny afternoon in the quaint town of Arlington, Texas in 1996. Nine-year-old Amber Hagerman and her five-year-old brother Ricky were visiting their grandparents and they decided to take their bikes for a spin at the local Winn-Dixie grocery store. Now this wasn't just any ordinary bike ride, it was an adventure filled with excitement and rule breaking. You know how it is when you're a kid and feel invincible, nothing can stop you, not even a pesky little rule about not going too far. So with the wind in their hair and the sun on their faces, they pedalled away, carefree and full of joy. But little did they know the danger was lurking around the corner. When Ricky decided it was time to head back home, Amber chose to stay behind, maybe wanting to extend the fun a little longer. But as time passed, Amber's family grew concerned. The last thing I told Amber was, stay with your little brother and you'll come right back. She was riding her bicycle. She turns around. She says, okay, mommy, I love you. There was no sign of Amber. Panic set in and the nightmare began. This small town, once considered safe, was turned upside down. A frantic search began with police and community members banding together to find the missing girl. The town was in chaos and no one knew what the next turn would bring. But as the days went by, hope began to fade and the worst fears became a reality. The unthinkable had happened and Amber's life had been cut tragically short. As fate would have it, a retired neighbor, Jim Kevill, witnessed the whole thing. He saw Amber alone, riding her bike up and down the street when a dark, possibly black pickup truck pulled up. A man, described as white, jumped out and grabbed her. Can you imagine the fear that must have engulfed Amber as she was thrown into the front seat of that vehicle, screaming for help? Jim, being the hero that he is, immediately called the cops and the police arrived within minutes. Arlington 911, what are you reporting? Yeah, I, I saw a... Um he might check up and he grabbed a little girl and he took off toward town with her. Uh huh. And she hollered. I, I'd seen that little girl over there playing up and down there, and he'd run up behind her and grabbed her. He turned around and come right back to here where his truck was, where the door was open, and put her in the truck. But unfortunately, it was already too late. Jimmy Whitson, Amber's grandfather, was on his way to the local Win dixie store when she was last seen. The Arlington police and FBI worked tirelessly interviewing neighbors and searching for the suspect and vehicle. Local radio and TV stations covered the story in their regular newscasts, hoping someone would come forward with information that could lead to Amber's safe return. But the days went by and there was no sign of Amber. Four days later, a man walking his dog near the Forest Hill Apartments, just a few miles from where Amber was snatched, made a gruesome discovery. He found a child's body at the bottom of a creek bed. It was Amber's body. An autopsy revealed the unimaginable. Amber had been held alive for two days, sexually assaulted, and then brutally murdered. Her throat had been cut open, and all she was wearing was a sock on her right foot. It's a tragedy that no parent should ever have to endure, and yet Amber's parents were now living through their worst nightmare. I went screaming, hoping that she would hear me, that she would come home. She was gone. Investigators were left with a mystery that seemed impossible to solve. They followed up on almost 8,000 leads, but none of them led to the murderer. The police suspected that whoever committed this heinous crime had to be familiar with the area. However, there was no forensic evidence to link anyone to the case. The storm that had occurred was so severe that Amber was not only in water but in running water in a creek bed for a while. This caused the water flow to wash away any evidence that could have helped the police. The police brought in someone from Arizona for investigation only to find out that the person wasn't even in the country during the week of the crime. It was a dead end, leaving the police with no leads and no suspects. The truck, driven by Amber Hagerman's abductor, was seen outside a laundromat near the Wind dixie store before Amber was snatched. The police theorized it was a crime of opportunity, and the man likely saw Amber and her brother Ricky ride into the parking lot together. Then he took Amber just moments after her brother left to ride back to their grandparents' house. 
This tragic story has remained unsolved for years, leaving us all with heavy hearts. We can only hope that one day justice will be served and the person responsible for Amber's kidnapping and murder will be held accountable for their actions. Rest in peace, Amber Hagerman, and know that you will always be remembered. It's been three weeks since the abduction and the authorities were at their wit's end, and the case seemed like a lost cause. That's when they decided to release a psychological profile of the killer, hoping to catch him before he struck again. But even with all their resources and a million dollar investment, the case remained unsolved. But hold on, there's more to this story than just a tragic ending. You see, Amber's death sparked an idea in the mind of a concerned citizen, who suggested that the news bulletins about abducted children should be repeated. And lo and behold, the radio stations loved the idea. The Dallas Amber Plan was born and quickly spread across the nation. In 2003, it became a national program thanks to President George Bush. Over 800 children have been rescued because of this system. But as much as we celebrate the success of the Amber Alert system, we can't forget the reason why it exists. Amber's killer is still out there. It's a devastating reality, but it's one that we have to face. Let's take a moment to honor the memory of Amber and the incredible impact she had on the world. Although her life was tragically cut short, her legacy lives on through the Amber Alert system, which was created in her name to help protect children in danger. This system has saved countless lives and reunited families in their time of need. So let's take a moment to appreciate the efforts of law enforcement and volunteers who work tirelessly to keep our community safe and support the Amber Alert system. Who knows, maybe justice will be served one day and Amber's killer will be caught. Let us remember her and continue supporting this vital system until then. Now, let's dive into Sergeant Ben Lopez's experience during Amber's disappearance. This case is personal to me because I've been involved in some aspects since the day that Amber was abducted. Also, it's personal to me because during the years I've come to know Donna Williams, Amber's mother, and Ricky, Hagerman, Amber's brother. So that makes it more personal to me as well. As a patrol officer in Arlington, he was used to responding to missing child cases, but this one felt different from the start. He was on the lookout for a black pickup truck associated with Amber's disappearance when he saw media vans lined up, signaling the severity of the situation. It's hard to imagine what must have been going through his mind at that moment, knowing that the search for Amber was now being broadcast for the world to see. But Sergeant Lopez remained focused on the task at hand and continued his search for Amber, hoping to bring her home safely to her family. This man is a true inspiration, a brave and dedicated officer who has risked his life time and time again to protect our communities and keep us safe. You see, Sergeant Lopez was one of the first responders on the scene when a young girl named Amber went missing. He remembers the day vividly, the fear and desperation permeating the air as they searched for clues that might lead them to her. But despite their best efforts, Amber was found dead just a few days later. It was a devastating blow to everyone involved, and the fact that her killer has never been caught only adds to the tragedy of the situation. Yet despite the heartbreak and frustration that comes with such a case, Sergeant Lopez has never given up hope. He knows that justice must be served for Amber and all of the other missing children out there. Over the years, Sergeant Lopez has become one of the lead investigators in Amber's case. He has poured countless hours into the investigation, chasing down every lead and following every possible avenue in search of the truth. It's important to remember that law enforcement officers like Sergeant Lopez are the unsung heroes of our communities. They put their lives on the line every single day to protect us from harm and we owe them our gratitude and support. So let's take a moment to honor the memory of Amber and all the other missing children and continue supporting the brave men and women who work tirelessly to keep us safe. However, Amber's kidnapping resulted in changes in how child abductions are handled nationwide. Her dramatic kidnapping and killing garnered national attention and led to calls for quicker responses to reports of missing children. The Amber Alert, developed in the years following the crime, is named for her. As of May 2020, 988 children have been found safe through the Amber Alert system, according to the Justice Department. Since Amber's kidnapping, the Arlington Police Department has received about 7,000 tips. It's unusual for the agency to get tips on cold cases, but Amber's case is unique, according to Lopez. 
More tips regarding what happened to Amber have poured in than any other cold case, he added. Anytime an anniversary date pops up or if there's a comparable incident anywhere in the nation, those types of things will prompt someone in the public to phone us. Gildan said, is that after the first days following a homicide, many components of the investigation cannot be reproduced or reinvestigated. Jimmy Kevill, the man who witnessed Amber's abduction, has since passed away, as have officers who are familiar with the case, including Ford. The facts of the case have mostly remained unchanged since 1996. Amber was riding her bicycle in the parking lot of an abandoned grocery store with her brother when a man in a pickup took her from the bike, pushed her into his vehicle and drove away. Amber screamed and attempted to kick her captor. Four days later, her body was discovered. The suspect is described by police as a white or Hispanic male in his 20s or 30s at the time of the incident. He stood less than six feet tall, had a medium body, and black or brown hair. According to authorities, he was driving a full-size, fleet-side single-cab black truck with a short wheelbase. At the time, it was in good shape, with no obvious damage and a clear back window. The description that you have from that first day and some of the specifics that came in the earliest phases 25 years later, it hasn't changed, Gildan said. Recent breakthroughs have been made in other local cold cases, including an arrest in September 2020 in the 1974 slaying of Carla Walker. But despite the challenges, the Arlington Police Department remains committed to finding justice for Amber Hageman. Detective Gildan, who now heads up the investigation, says that he and his team still follow up on every tip that comes in, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. And there is a reason for hope. In 2019, the department announced that they had obtained new DNA evidence in Amber's case. While they couldn't release any details about the evidence, they did say that it could potentially lead to a breakthrough in the case. The use of DNA evidence has played a crucial role in solving other high-profile cold cases in recent years. In the case of the Golden State Killer, for example, DNA evidence collected decades earlier was finally matched to the killer in 2018, leading to his arrest and conviction. Moreover, the possibility of a similar breakthrough could happen in Amber's case. But until that day, the Arlington community continues to honor her memory and hold out hope for justice. Each year on the anniversary of her abduction, a candlelight vigil is held in the parking lot where she was taken. People gather to remember Amber, pray for her family, and to renew their commitment to finding her killer. And while it's been 25 years since her abduction, Amber's legacy continues to live on. The Amber Alert system created in her honor has saved countless lives and her story has inspired people across the country to fight for missing and exploited children. So while Amber's killer may still be out there, the impact of her life and tragic death will never be forgotten. As Detective Gildan says, the legacy of Amber lives on and we will continue to work tirelessly until justice is served. Well, 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 if it isn't the undying spirit of a mother who will stop at nothing to get justice for her baby girl, Donna Norris is a mother who never gives up hope, who never gives up the fight, and who never surrenders to the thought of giving up on her daughter's justice. She's a warrior, a hero, and a legend in the making. When asked about the killer of her daughter Amber, Donna exclaimed, I'm not going to give up. I still have hope that he will be caught one day. We want justice for Amber. Whoever did this will be caught. It's just a matter of time. You go, Donna. You show the killer that he can run, but never hide. Justice is coming, and it's coming with a vengeance. But that's not all, folks. Donna knows that her daughter would be proud and happy with the making of the Amber Alert. She's grateful that this amazing system rooted in her child's death has saved so many lives. But let's not forget, it's bittersweet. Amber had to die for it to come into place. And that's something that Donna can't help but think about. It's awesome, it's great, but I can't help but think, what if there was an Amber Alert when she went missing? She wonders, would she still be alive today? It's a heartbreaking thought, but Donna doesn't let that stop her. She keeps on fighting, keeps on hoping, and keeps on believing that justice will prevail. So let's give it up for Donna Norris, the mother who never gives up, the warrior who fights for justice, the hero who keeps on believing. Amber's legacy lives on through her mother's unwavering spirit, and we can all learn a thing or two from her. Since the Amber Alert was first introduced, plenty of critics have said it's more of a show than an effective tool for catching kidnappers, and this new documentary doesn't address those criticisms at all. Now that's got some folks a little ticked off. 
But that's not the only problem with the documentary. See, it also fails to mention how this whole see something, say something culture feeds into crime paranoia and creates a constant sense of policing. And that's not good for anyone. Sure, we want to catch the bad guys, but we don't want to live in a world where we're constantly looking over our shoulders. Now, most of the debate about true crime has been focused on the gratuitous gore and the lack of empathy for victims' families. But this documentary misses the mark differently. It doesn't connect individual crimes to broader societal developments. And that's a real shame, because we could all learn a lot from the context in which these crimes happen. Instead, the Amber Alert is treated like a neutral, positive thing that regular citizens can do to make their communities safer. But in reality, this was a time when politicians were more interested in criminalization than justice. And that led to a lot of black people being unfairly imprisoned. We can't just ignore that context and act like the Amber Alert is a perfect solution to the problem of child abduction. Now, the documentary does end on a hopeful note, with the mother of the child who inspired the Amber Alert meeting the producer who helped spread the footage. But even that moment is tinged with frustration. The mother is angry that law enforcement hasn't made more progress on her daughter's case. And the documentary doesn't explore why that might be the case. All in all, it's a missed opportunity. The Amber Alert has a significant history, and this documentary could have used that history to push against the limitations of true crime storytelling. But instead, it just repeats the same old tropes without any real critique. And that's a real shame, because we deserve better than that. So, my friends, let us take a moment to reflect on this tale of tragedy and hope. Let us remember Amber's life and the change she inspired. And let us continue supporting programs that protect our children and keep them safe from harm. For who knows, maybe one day, one of us could be the next Amber Hagerman. And it's up to all of us to make sure that doesn't happen. So folks, that is the tragic story behind the Amber Alert. However, the Amber Alert saved lots of children from child abuse. Anytime you hear the alert, you must take appropriate action to save a child.